And then it happened. The angel, the same angel of the Lord appeared to me when I was a young boy, I was almost five years old. And again, when I was 14, that same angel appeared to me again and said, stood right alongside of me, said, God has heard our prayers and we're going to heaven. I haven't been there since you was born. And then here came this beautiful, wonderful character coming down from the skies, coming down with a flaming sword in his hand. An angel eight feet tall stood on the other side and said to me, God has heard your prayers, and I've come to take you to heaven. What a wonderful experience as we were sailing up, going up, up, up. We left this earth together, all three of us, and left the people behind. We traveled up past Jupiter and Mars. We traveled up past all of the solar systems and went out into the place where the stars were shining, where there was beautiful stars, looking toward heaven, all the faces in those stars, glorifying and praising God. God asked Job, where were you when I set the stars in place? Where were you when I laid the foundation of the world? Here we were out in God's territory, out in outer, outer, outer space, sailing upwards, for eight, for six hours through the skies, through right through the space, right through where there was no hindrance, right through all the stars as they were singing to the glory of God. It was a miraculous experience. It was the most wonderful reality. And this will happen to you when you leave this earth, when, you're, when your body is put down in the grave and your soul leaves your body. As your soul leaves your body, your soul will go to heaven and will sail up into the upward, 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 atmosphere of God. Now, heaven is 80 times larger than the earth, making it, uh, making it 2 million miles around it. And as we came to the outer perimeter of heaven with all of the wonderful, wonderful fire from God, the clouds and the fire and all that around heaven, and thundering was going on. It was the voice of God coming out from the great, great, great heaven, the voice of God into the heavens. Many people hear the voice of God today Many, 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 many million miles away, they hear the voice of God in their bedroom, in their, in their kitchen. Some, a voice speaks to them many times. It is the voice of God. And we can so wonderfully hear the voice of God coming out of heaven. Then we went through the fire, right through this fire, into the outer perimeter of heaven, right inside of the cloud, passing through the fire, passing through the cloud, passing through the great thunders, passing through from uh, this, this uh, outer space into the inward perimeter of heaven. As we came inside, there were some tremendous gates. The, not the inward gates, but the outward gates, and they opened up. As they opened up, the three of us went inside the first heaven. Here was billions of souls all around the outer perimeter of heaven. They're waiting to go before the judgment throne of God. These were those that had been just washed in the blood where Jesus had gone down into the bowels of the earth and took out those souls out of the prison house of death and took them into the outer perimeter of heaven. It was a miraculous sight to see the millions out there outside uh, on the first heaven. Then the gates opened again. And we went through a corridor of flaming, flaming, flaming sword, flaming archangels on each side as the second gates opened. Oh, what a wonderful sight. We stepped inside of heaven as its gates opened, and there was the great throne of God, so miraculous and so great, and God sitting on that throne. God the Father on that throne, sitting there, and Jesus on his right hand. And here was all the wonderful, wonderful reality of heaven. As we looked to our left and looked to our right, could see the millions and millions of angels, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That adds up in my book to millions. And there they were, dancing before the throne of God, dancing before Jesus, dancing and singing to the glory of God. And then the first one I spoke to was the Apostle Paul. We was then from the first heaven to the second heaven and into the third heaven. The third heaven is paved with gold, the most beautiful, beautiful pavement you ever saw. And where Paul had stood many years ago, he left footmarks in the gold because the gold had not set yet. God had poured it hot and he made footmarks. Then I spoke to Paul, he appeared. That is the soul of Paul, has appeared to me. And as we talked together and walked together across heaven. Then we came to Abraham, behold, who was there with Sarah, just like they were upon this earth. You know what he's doing in heaven? Entertaining beggars. He is the bosom of God. And there he was, that pre precious man of God, Abraham, 
the father of nations, the father of the Jews, the father of the Arabs, and the, and the husband of the free and the bondwoman. Abraham was so precious and so wonderful. Stood there as a character as he did the Bible days. He was a very rich man on this earth, and he paid his tithe to Melchizedek. So rich, he owned cattle and there and everything. And then I spoke to Abraham, and I said, Abraham, how long have you been here? And he thought a minute, and he said, oh, a day or so. You know, he said, a day is a thousand years with our God, and soon two days will be over, pointing toward heaven, toward Jesus, and toward God. Soon our Jesus is going to leave this heaven, come down, going down to the earth, and bring back the souls from out of this uh, atmosphere, the new, uh, new earth, uh, the earth down here. After this had happened... We begin to walk over the different parts of heaven. Leaving Abraham, we walk yes, the left you. hand of God. Walking toward the left hand of God, here came three beautiful characters. My mother, the mother of Jesus, and Jesus in the middle. As I met them, just as it was walking down a street or a boulevard, I was walking toward them, and they were walking toward me. And my mother reached out to me and said, Percy... And then said, we've been waiting for you. I've been praying for you all these years that I've been here. I've been praying for you that you would come to heaven. Then Mary, the mother of Jesus, spoke just in a normal voice. The two of them become friends. And Jesus stepped forward. Oh, it was a wonderful reality to see Jesus. The one that walked the shores of Galilee and the Jericho Road. The one that shed his blood upon the cross. The one that gave us victory over death. The one precious Jesus that made all this way possible. And he walked up to me put his arms around me. And he said, Percy. I said, oh, I felt so, so wonderful. He said, call me Jesus. So I called him Jesus. He called me Percy. And we walked together all inside of heaven for five and a half whole days. After we had done that, we walked together to the uh, sea of gla to the sea of glass and to the great, wonderful, wonderful city four square, that new Jerusalem, that great temple up there. And we got on to that sea of glass. My mother asked me to dance with her. She would never have danced upon this earth. No way. But we danced together on the, sea of, on, the, on the sea of glass. But on that sea of glass was thousands and thousands of angels all dancing and singing to God. What a glorious place heaven is. You can't think of heaven as a dull place. No way. The music was playing. The wonderful music. The harps and the organs and all that music playing. More beautiful than anything that's ever played upon this earth. That music was so precious. Then we went to the base of the, of the city four square. The base of that 50. 1,500 mile high building. And we then we got into an elevator. Now, it was not an elevator as you know it upon this earth. It was the power of God and the Spirit of God. We began to rise up and went halfway up, 700 miles up the side of this great city four square. And Jesus said, this is your place, your office, your home while you're in heaven. This is where you'll work out of. This is where you'll be. And listen, there's work in heaven, not a lazy place. You work, everybody is doing something. So there I'll have an office in heaven, halfway up the city four square, a place. And it's so beautiful. It's studded with all kinds of precious stones. And the front of it is like an arch. Like, oh, you know, the buildings upon this earth are obsolete according to the buildings in our beautiful heaven. And as we sat inside, talking inside of, the, of my apartment, my apartment in the city four square. Then after that, we went on up the other 700 miles until we came to the top of the city, the top of the city of God, the top of the city four square. We could look down uh, from the top of the city four square. We could see the top of the temple because the temple is exactly a thousand miles high, fifteen, therefore it acts like a spire or, or a part of the temple. And there you can see that great temple down there, a thousand square miles of seating capacity. And as we got on top of the city four square and, and the top, there was literally hundreds and hundreds and more hundreds of chariots. And we could look down from that top of that city four square, we could see the mansions. We could see the throne of God. We could see almost under the altar. There was this great miraculous sight, so great and so glorious and so precious. Listen, friends, you listen to these albums, you'll never be the same again. It will change your life completely. Many have said that their life has been changed through listening to this wonderful message. Then Jesus said, I'm going to take you into the banqueting house. 
the banquet house is where we go in to eat. In the Bible it says very clearly, He brought me into the banquet house, and His banner over me is love. And in that banquet house was literally thousands upon thousands of people, those that had nothing upon this earth. I remember right well a little woman down in Columbia who had nothing, sitting on the roadside, eating out of cans. She had malnutrition. All the the family died of malnutrition, want of food. But yet, she was sitting right at that table with the rest, eating abundance in heaven, because heaven is full of abundance, with all the glorious fruit there, the manna, and all the precious tables just full of fruit as they could be. But remember, we were flying in a chariot, not an airplane, not anything like that, not a horse and carriage, but in a chariot, powered by the glorious Spirit of God. What a wonderful ride that way it was to fly. And over the banquet of tables, because the the, table, the banquet house is a thousand miles high. So there, the, the structure of it, and the beauty, and all the tapestries hanging from the ceiling. And on these tapestries, it says very clear, uh, the, his banner over me is love. The word love is all over the banquet house, because it's God's love that brought us into this great fellowship, the fellowship of God in the banquet house. Then after we'd gone over the top of the table... Jesus got out of the chariot, very well got right out, and went through space, because he was still on top of the great throne of God. Then we went to the head table. Oh, it was wonderful. Jesus was sitting at that head table right across from me. He said to me, Percy, eat of the fruit of the vine. Eat, eat of this table. And that table was full of fruit. And every time you'd reach down to get one, to take a piece of fruit to eat, another one would immediately appear uh, in the same place where you took of the fruit. And there was wonderful, like wine, fruit to drink. All oh, the taste was so wonderful as we could listen, as we could taste the wonderful fruit and the fruit of the vine. Then Jesus spoke to me, and he said, Welcome, Percy, into the banquet house. There was Jesus sitting at the head table, and many of them sitting around. I could look around. Over to my right I saw Abraham, a mother of Jesus, my mother, and all the ones I'd met upon this earth that had gone into heaven, the preachers and all of those, the poor people and all of those, and those that had been sick with cancer, those that had been suffering upon this earth in the hospital, but yet gave their heart to Jesus. No more suffering. There they were sitting at the tables in the banqueting house. It was so gorgeous and so real to see this great place of the thousands of people dining and eating with Jesus. That's the most wonderful part about it. Jesus went to the cross of Calvary, shed his blood upon Calvary, made it possible for us to have our home in heaven. So in heaven, it's so precious and so real. The glories of God are there, the realities of God. I visited some of the great buildings of this earth, the Taj Mahal, the Buckingham Palace, you name it, I've been there. But not one, one of these places even begin to compare with the great glories of God. For John said, I, I saw the new heaven, because I never studied Revelation before I went to heaven. I, I kind of used to pass that up, because I thought it was just too deep for me. But after I'd been to heaven, I had this wonderful experience with God. I began to read in the Bible, and read in Revelation, and it all answered perfectly as I saw it. From the banquet house, we came back out, back up to the top of the city, four square, one time and the other time we went on through. But we got back up on the top of the city, four square. As we looked down, we saw the great mansions of heaven. Now, the mansions of heaven are above the banquet house. There are three, three distinct rows of mansions, all looking towards the throne of God. And so, back again down until we came to the walk before the throne of God, a glorious, glorious walk before the throne of God. And there was the mansions all facing the throne of God. But the first row of mansions was down a little bit, the second one was higher, and the third one was higher, acting like an amphitheater. third. So each one could look directly into the throne. Now, as we came down there to this wonderful boulevard, we began to walk together, Jesus, my mother, and many others walking me before the throne of God, before the Lord, along before the mansion, where those souls of those that have been great soul winners upon this earth, there they were all living, before God, before the throne of God, waiting to entertain their souls. Now, many of them entertain their souls already because they won them to Jesus, so they, therefore they have a wonderful time with the souls they won because they were telling them the gospel truth and they won souls. 
Now, I was walking along that mansion. It's about the first one I met after three mansions down was Smith Wigglesworth. Now, I knew Smith real well. I held his oil bottle for him in California, Oakland, California, in not too big a tent, just a little tent, but he was a great man of faith. There he was inside of heaven. He didn't have any derby hat on or any of the clothes, but he was dressed in the beautiful ma- mantle of God. Oh, how beautiful are those clothes if you could just see them. If you could just see uh, Gypsy Smith, if you could just see Amy McPherson, if you could just see Kath and all these ones who were great soul winners. There they were in their mansion before God, dressed beautifully in the most beautiful, beautiful heavenly clothes you'd ever saw. And going along further, I remember the black man I saw, Bishop Mason of the Church of God in Christ. There he was in his mansion. There he was so real, sitting with the rest of them. On down there was more. Dr. Ham and I went and we walked. Well, so many I recognized that had taken over their mansions in heaven and that were being being made ready for their time of their reward. So I asked Smith Wiggles, I said to him, What are you waiting for here? Everyone, I said, I'm waiting for my body. We're all waiting for our body to come up here. Because it's going to be a resurrection, my body's going to come out of the grave, going to come up to my soul, and we're going to live in this wonderful, precious place forever and ever and ever and ever. Can you imagine a place where there's no death, no death at all, living for eternal life in heaven with God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Ghost? And to see the archangel then going along in front of those mansions, we came to this beautiful brazen altar, the golden altar. If you ever saw the golden altar, you'd never be the same. The golden altar with the cherubims, the seraphims, and all on that glorious, beautiful... When I say it's a golden altar, it's actually the most glittering gold you ever looked at. And on that, on there is the, is the sacrifice, on the altars of sacrifice, the golden altar of sacrifice. This is where you are lay when you come to the altar and you accept Jesus as your Savior and you lay it on the all on the altar. It's the golden altar that accepts your sacrifice of yourself that you might be, be saved and ready for heaven. And then next to that golden altar is the is the brazen altar. Now can you imagine two altars with a great big passageway between them and right on to, on that brazen altar is just an altar of fiery hot coals because the Throne of God, God is a fire. And here's these throne. Oh, so miraculous are these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful white hot coals. And Jesus did something for me twice. He took his fingers. He didn't need tongs like they did back there for the prophet. They had to use tongs for the prophet when, when the man, the prophet, had it. Took tongs and picked them. Jesus took his bare fingers and picked up this hot coal. Percy said, open your soul mouth. And I swallowed fire. Now, how could you be ever be the same when you swallowed fire, the fire of God in your soul? How could you ever be the same? That's why I'm 83 years old, going to tell this message to the world. After that, so after that hot coal was put in my throat, we begin to walk together around the different places, walking here, and we could see right under this passageway between the golden altar and the brazen altar, in there, right in under the throne of God, and here was pouring out of there the Spirit of God. It was a wonderful sight if you could see, stand there, and see this regular, regular flow. Kind of reminded me of an irrigation pump in the fields where the irrigation pump moves and flows. Here was the power and the Spirit of God flowing out from that regular pace into the, into the sea of, into the crystal river, into that river. And that river was flooding right into that river, was filling up. Very, very deep, very wide, filled with the Spirit of God, and that river is getting full. Now, at the foot of those floodgates, uh, I mean, at the foot of that great river, there's the floodgates. These floodgates are shaking. The Spirit of God has been pressing against these floodgates for many years. Not too much has been seeping out since 1906, but enough to stir the world to make people realize there's a God to get up and preach the gospel. Then after that had happened... This wonderful, 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 wonderful walk by the river. We came to the floodgates. They were shaking. Jesus said, very soon, my Father's going to open the floodgates. When he opens the floodgates, the whole earth is going to shake and rock and reel under the power of God. That's what's going to happen. Coming out from the throne of God into that river and down from that river down into the earth. 
The Spirit of God is going to pour down upon this earth just exactly like honey runs around an apple. Jesus explained to me that earth he said down there is going to shake so much. It's going to shake all the trinkets off the shelves. It's got these things that you've been hoarding up on this earth and hoarding them up because you think they're valuable. They're not. They're just nothing because laying up our treasures in heaven, which I'm talking about, where neither rust nor moth can corrupt, that's what's going to last. And then we're going to tell you in the next uh, in, in, in the next uh, part of this tape, we're going to tell you about the wonderful, he- wonderful windows of heaven. You're going to be so blessed by these 12 hours of tape. You'll never be the same. We're going to take you all over God's heaven, underneath the throne, over. We'll be telling you all about it. But as this earthly walk on this earth, begin to realize there's a heaven. Can you imagine those floodgates opening up and all that great power coming upon this earth and the graves upon this earth shaking? The resurrection is going to take place. The graves are going to open up. When the graves open up, the dead in Christ is going to, going to, the dead in Christ is going to raise. We that remain are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. It's going to be a miraculous time. But here's where we're going to go. Up to heaven, a 12-hour journey, right into heaven, the same way as I went. Oh, it's going to be so miraculous. Stopping at the wonderful, 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 wonderful banquet. That banquet in the in the heavens, in the space, where Jesus is going to come out of heaven, the bridegroom for his bride, and we're all going to back into heaven together. Friends, you must, you must, you must, You must, I say you must, change your life. If you're not changed, you'll never be the same. God bless you. He's a great God. He's a wonderful God. After we crossed the river, we came to the windows of heaven. There are many, many windows in heaven. The Bible tells us very clearly. Pay your tithes, do what God tells you to do, and he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you'll not be able to contain it. So then we stood at these windows, and Jesus put his hands upon my eyes. He said, Percy, look out in eternity. This is where my father and me came from. Looking out through those windows of heaven, you could see millions of miles out there into eternity where God came from with his great creation. What a wonderful, wonderful reality it was to see all the way out into eternity. Can you imagine looking into endless eternity. That's what I did with Jesus. The great created God, where he created all these great, 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 wonderful, wonderful planets and come to heaven to prepare heaven for us. A heaven 80 times larger than the earth. As we looked out of those windows, Jesus said, these blessings here are for the people down upon this earth to pay their tithes. Then he took me to the next table and the next table, and the next table. There was a sacrifice offering for people that made a sacrifice that they would get blessings for sacrificing to the Lord. But the most wonderful, wonderful, wonderful window was the offering of prosperity. If you give an offering and expect to prosper, that's where you get the great blessing, by giving willingly, lovingly into the prosperity offering. What happens is this. When you give into the prosperity offering, prosperity offering, you automatically become prosperous. Now, that's wonderful. Then there's the heave offering and all these different offerings, the love offering, the heave offering, the sacrifice offering. And we saw all this offering. If you could see the great blessings stacked up on the table and what God was blessing the people upon this earth because they give to his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful work. Now, after we cross back over the river, we first walk down the side of the river. And Jesus said, Stop, Percy. He picked a piece of fruit off of that tree and told me to eat it, and I did. Then the next tree down, he picked a large leaf off of that tree. He put that leaf on my breast. He said, Percy, this is for the healing of the nations. Go out and heal the nations and tell them about me. And I've been now practically all over the world carrying this message. But in heaven, there's none what one part of this earth that is like heaven. Can you imagine a place so beautiful, so great? And as we looked back, we saw heaven's gate open up. And here came souls in, been born again, somewhere down over this earth, maybe a revival or someplace. 
several of those souls coming inside of the heaven that had been born again and that had gone to be with Jesus. They come inside of that heavenly gate, and as they come inside, the welcoming part took place. The bells over the top of God's throne began to ring. They rang out with joy because the souls had come into the altar, come into the Lord. The souls upon this earth had left the demon powers of the devil and had come in to be with God. What a wonderful sight. Then we walked around God's heaven, walking in different places. But we came to a wonderful part. We came to underneath the altar. This was a touching sight, under the altar of God. As we looked Jesus, we looked all several of us underneath, and there was literally not thousands, but millions of souls under there praying because they'd been martyred and suffered, martyred for the gospel of Christ. They'd been suffering on this earth. The early Christians of Rome was under there. It was a massive crowd, all praying the prayer, How long, O oh God, how long, O oh God, will it be before we revenge our enemy? I went underneath the altar of God with them, right underneath, to pray with them, to see all of those souls under there just praying to God. The ones that have been martyred, the mission has been martyred. Every day they come out to worship God, come out to worship God, and God gives them a special blessing because they gave their life for the gospel. They gave their life on the mission field. They gave their life many different ways. And as we prayed with them, it was wonderful. What a wonderful power it was. Then we went to the other side of the altar, and there was 10,000 miles of garden. Beautiful garden with trees and everything. And inside this garden was, was all the thousands of little children. Many of them been aborted. Many of them died before the age of seven. Playing there in that garden because Jesus blesses those children in heaven every day as he did upon this earth. For he said, Do you remember the words what Jesus said in my Father's house are many mansions? For not so I would told you I go to prepare a place for you also said, Suffer little children, forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And that's exactly true. The kingdom of heaven is full of little children all over the place, dancing, playing, singing, that been died at the age of two, three, or whatever. Many of them died in the 13th century long in there. Absolutely grown up to the age of seven or eight, dancing before God before the throne, going about heaven with a smile upon their face because they're being blessed by Jesus. They've been blessed by him. They've been blessed by God's wonderful love. They've come from this terrible condition upon this earth into heaven. Those that died of polio, those that died of different diseases, all there, all there with Jesus, all there, all there, I say, and having a happy time in the great garden of God. And Jesus was out there, went out with me and several others, and he laid his hands upon them and blessed them. Oh, what a wonderful sight that is. Then we came back out before the throne of God again. And as we began to walk before the throne of God, back toward the left hand of God, Jesus said to me, Percy, you're going to sit down on seats of authority. My, what an experience. He stretched out his left hand over, as it were, a large portion of the heavens, the heavens, like, just like a hem, silken feathers, very wide and very big. Jesus stood at the edge of that with me. He said, Percy, God is going to bless you. You're going to sit on the seats of authority and love and sit on the first seat. This I did. I went under the left hand of God and under all the feathers and sat on this seat. Can you imagine such a wonderful, wonderful reality of being blessed that way in heaven? You'll have had the same experience. I sat on the seat of love. You could never be the same again. It's impossible to hate anybody. It's impossible once you've sat on that seat, and I feel that love still in my heart. Then I moved over to the next one, the next one. Sat on the seat of knowledge. I didn't know very much before I went to heaven. I didn't know heaven was such a beautiful place. I didn't know that our reward was going to be so great. I didn't know all these wonderful realities of heaven until I sat on the seat of knowledge. When I sat on the seat of knowledge, it all of heaven began to reveal itself to me. I could see the city four squared all as I came back to me what I read in the Bible. 
there was that beautiful, beautiful seat, and I was sitting on it. Moved over to the seat of knowledge, then to the seat of wisdom. I want to tell you, you get heavenly wisdom. You'll never be the same. You'll know how to do things for God. I didn't know how to do things for God before I sat on the seat of wisdom. Do you remember how wisdom is one of the great gifts of God? And in order to carry this message to the four corners of the earth, in order to publish it, in order to have tapes, certainly a person is going to have to have wisdom, be able to do it. God's given me wisdom how to do it. Oh, with this great gigantic responsibility I have. How could a man do it unless he had wisdom from God? No way. He'd get into confusion. He would get into all kinds of things. But that's impossible to get into confusion or any different kinds of difficulty when you do it God's way. So we're doing it by God's wisdom, knowledge and wisdom. Then the seat of long-suffering. Certainly, in this kind of a ministry, you've got to be able to just have long suffering. Not expect everything, anything to happen in two minutes, but wait upon the Lord. He that waits upon the Lord will renew his strength. You wait upon the Lord for it to happen. It's miraculous to see what God is doing. I'm going practically everywhere to carry this message of heaven and sitting on these seats of... of then the seat of suffering. Long suffering, long suffering. And you don't you think it's all honey and joy... You're going, to, you're going to suffer a little bit when you have this great ministry. Things you're going to suffer, but that suffering brings joy. And then I sat on the seat of joy. Oh, as you could once sit on the seat of joy in heaven. Something comes across you that you're just full of joy, full of happiness, full of love, full of happiness. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's why we're calling this joy of heaven, Bible ministry, because I know what the joy of heaven is. Then after we had done all of this, sitting on these different seats, I came out. And Jesus said, Percy, now you're fit. After you've been ordained, you're fit to carry this message around the world. So Jesus took me to the right hand of God for a business meeting. Can you imagine having a business meeting in heaven? God's a business God, and he's a good God. Gathered at this business meeting was literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, some of them I'd known. There was Abraham, there was Jesus, there was Moses, the mother of Jesus, all of them right there at this, this ordination. Can you imagine someone being ordained in heaven? The ordination better come from heaven or you'll never make it. Man may ordain you, but you better be ordained of God and called of God to really and truly make it real. I sat there on a heavenly seat. There was Jesus praying as he prayed when he walked the shores of Galilee and the Jericho Road. When he prayed for the sick, and he said, Percy, we're praying for you. And there they were all around me, looking at me, the prophets, and all of them, looking at me as I was in the midst of them, being ordained to carry this message to the four corners of the earth. I've attended many orda ordinations, but unless that ordination comes through the Spirit and the power of God, you're just not ordained. You may be ordained by man, but you better be ordained by the Spirit. And I really got a wonderful ordination by the Spirit of God. Then after we went traveling around God's heaven for five and a half days, can you imagine traveling around with Jesus all over God's heaven for five and a half days? You got really something to look through. Heaven has one of the greatest orchestras in the world. I've seen orchestras of all kinds. I've seen them at the Crystal Palace. I've seen the orchestras of the different world, the Marine Band, and you name it, I've seen most of them. But can you imagine, now try just to conceive with your mind, with your a million or more playing instruments, I said a million, a million out there playing with harps, such beautiful big harps, and with great big organs, beautiful organs, pianos so big you couldn't imagine, guitars so beautiful, and all kinds of beautiful trumpets. Well, there's no man can blow a trumpet on this earth like the angels and gods blow them in heaven. Impossible. When the trump of God is sounding, it's the most miraculous sight you ever saw. All over God's heaven, the trumpets blowing. Trumpets in Zion blowing. It's such a beautiful reality. Angels blowing, men blowing. Whatever instruments you blow down here, you'll play it in heaven. And I sat in the midst of that great orchestra and heard that wonderful music. Now, there's no time in heaven you don't give a beat in heaven. It's just continuous sound and continuous glory of the glorious, wonderful music of heaven. 
And then what, what do you think happens? The angels sing. The angels are the most wonderful singers you could imagine. I've heard choirs upon this earth, big choirs. I heard a choir once of almost several hundred. But the choirs in heaven, literally thousands singing together, the angels singing in that wonderful heavenly voice. Oh, how gorgeous it is. You'd want to sit there forever, just ever, because you're going to be there forever. You'll want to sit forever and hear the angels sing. But we join in with them. That's the most wonderful part. And I saw the new Jerusalem beside the temple stood. If you could hear that, all that beautiful. And you know what they're singing? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty in the heavenly language. And then as the music stops and God begins to reach forth his hand and stretch his great hand over that great orchestra and blesses them every day. Every day this happens as God listens to the music. And then I want to tell you how the prayers go up before God. You may ring a, an emergency summer, number. A good number to read is J-E-S-U-S. Jesus is the chairman of my board upon this earth. We have a board here. We're down here. But Jesus is the chairman of the board. And that's a good one to have as chairman of the board. Because he'll never go wrong. Never. And then we begin to uh, go along further and further and further as we begin to organize into the glories of God. Then we saw this great record, record book, record book. This book was so great and so big, laying before the altar of God, not far from the brazen altar. This is where your name's written in. This was called the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus shed his blood upon Calvary, and he shed his blood that you may your name be written in the Lamb's Book. A great big Bible, I mean a great big book, so big, you couldn't imagine how big. And Jesus is a lion of the tribe of Judah. He's able to open that book. And he said, Percy, I'm going to show you your name inside the book. Oh, what a wonderful experience. My name's written in that book. I'm a registered member in heaven. I've registered in many of the hotels. I've registered in all kinds. And that doesn't mean much, but my name is registered. Registered, I said registered, in the Lamb's book of life. And Jesus took his hand and opened that book right to the very page he said, Percy, here's your name. To imagine your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'll tell you, no man can take that out once it's there. It's inscribed in that book. And only and I, I tell you, I don't think many people ever get their name removed, but it's glorious. And thousands and millions of names in that thick book, one after the other. Here come maybe John Jones and all kinds of names right on down the line until he put his finger right on my name, right in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is records, my friend. This is a recording book that no man can change. They cannot change what God has done. What God has done, let no man put us under. Then we were there, we were there watching the prayers going up. The prayers going up to heaven. Now, when you pray, you pray to Jesus, and you've got immediate answer. But then you've got to remember that there's the prayer of intercession, the prayer of, of travail, which God listens to. The prayer of intercession. Jesus answers the prayer. The emergency. He's the one who takes care of the emergency. But then you've got the prayers of intercession. You've got the of, of the wonderful, wonderful travail. You remember Daniel back there? Daniel in the da book of Daniel? He prayed and waited for the prayer. And the prince of Persia got messing around and tried to hinder that prayer. But now we're lifting a different, different age. Jesus went to the cross. He shed his blood upon the cross. And he said, when you pray, say, Our Father art in heaven. Here you come heaven again. You pray. So we now pray to the Father in Jesus' name. So then these prayers go up on, onto the altar of God. There they land there, like an incense. Millions of prayers of the whole earth landing on the altar of God. When they land on there, they finally end up on the brazen altar. When they do, they become like incense, like steam. Just like you can see it, like just like a misty spirit. Then they rise up and go all the way around the throne of God's head. All the way, that's why you can't see God's face. A lot of people don't realize that. Those prayers are all around God's face, and He's listening to them. 
Now, God is an omnipotent God. He can listen to a million things at one time, and he's listened to all the prayers of the earth. Then after he's done that, he sends the answer back down. You may be praying for harvest of souls. So it, God has to be the one to let it happen. And then you pray to move the devil away. God, while he's doing that, he's destroying cancer for him. He's destroying sickness. He's destroying all these things through these prayers. So then these prayers begin to start all the way down. Now you pray for, for two days or three days. Wait for your answer. Don't get up and just run. You're wanting an answer, aren't you? Well, heaven's going to answer when you pray without ceasing. Without ceasing. That's exactly what those prayers are for and the way they happen. And the women up there take those prayers from off the golden altar and put them on the brazen altar. They have a job up there because you can actually see those prayers. Now let's turn forward to the throne of God itself. I'm going to tell you some secrets before I get through in this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful album of heaven. Secrets. Wonderful secrets. Looking toward the throne, there are the four beasts. Four beasts, eyes in the back and in the front. Beasts. They all represent everyone a different part of life. They all of them do, like a calf and so forth. And these elders, the, these elders are all around among them. Here's the four great beasts by God, and then the elders. Now the elders recognize the power of God. They're crowned elders. They take their crowns off every day and Throw them at the feet of God. Throw them down. Say it, showing that He is God Almighty. Giving Him all the power and all the glory. Because the elders give reverence to God and take their crowns off and throw them because, because He's the crown of God. He is the God of Shaddai, is the great God. He's the one that created all. So there He sits in heaven. Now Jesus is fixing the mansions. It's wonderful to see the mansions being constructed and all the diamonds and everything going into them, the onyxes, emeralds, all in. God creates those. God makes them for Jesus to use. So then, almost about halfway across the base and the floor of heaven, on the right hand of God, this is that great stacks and stacks, metric stacks of diamonds. Millions of them. Diamonds. Can you see those glittering diamonds in heaven? And the emeralds pearls. Oh, such a great, gigantic. And Jesus has loads of them brought to him. And he instructs them to stud your mansion inside and out with precious pearl. Now this earth, you see, you get all the one down there, it's something. But you're going to have abundance and you're going to have all the diamonds you want, all of these precious stones you want, because your mansion or literally, we're going to paper a room here pretty soon. But <laughs> when you think of all your room being studded with diamonds, I want to tell you, brother and sister, It'd be different than just putting one of those little ones on your ring. A whole lot different. And then the wedding garments are being made. During these 12 hours, I'm going to take you into some of the most miraculous miraculous secrets of heaven, telling the secrets in this 12 hours of tapes. But there's a great needlework house that's big. Inside of this brick needle house, where they're making your wedding garment, there's literally thousands of angels in there with fine needlework, making your wedding garments. Oh, isn't he a glorious God to make it? You know why? Because Jesus paid for those ma- ma- those wonderful mantles to be put on you by his shedding of the blood of Calvary. And if you could see the thousands and thousands and thousands of wedding garments hanging up just rows and rows and rows and rows of them, when you come up from out of the grave, you'll be naked. You'll come out of that grave just exactly as you came out of your mother's womb. I mean, no cro- no clothes on you whatsoever. You'll come naked and back in this world. And as you start up towards Jesus, your head will go right through, explain to me, right through the wedding garment on, and you'll go fully clothed with the garment on to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Oh, my heavens. What a wonderful reality. Can you imagine a naked body going up, going up to heaven, and then the wedding garment falling on you? But that's not all. When you get through the wedding in outer space, God's going to put you all in that city four square, and you're going to ride it all the way back into heaven. And when you come out of it, you'll go before the throne of God. Jesus, and you'll have this wedding garment on. Oh, what a glory. I saw those wedding garments so beautiful. 
I didn't wouldn't walk around heaven naked. I had a special one put on me while I was in heaven. Jesus had one on. All of those are clothed in the righteousness of God. Oh, if you could imagine heaven, so beautiful and so great, you just got to go there, and that's all there is to it. Because if you don't, you won't be happy. Then we could see the, the, all this construction taking place. He's building and building and building and building. Because we're going to need a lot of mansions. But that's not all. There's 10,000 miles of another part of heaven, which I didn't see in the, know in the Bible. Here was 10,000, a city. He says, we'll take you into the city of God. Now, I kind of, kind of a little bit, I begin to think about that. The city of God. It was a 10,000 mile square city. There, so beautiful. So laid out the boulevards, laid out so beautiful. And it was full of smaller mansions where people, where the souls live. They, each one has a, has a, has a house, a mansion of his own. And the big mansions were the soul winners. Can you, and we went into that part of that 10,000 square miles of great city. It was laid out so beautiful. Street inside of it, all the boulevards lit up by the glory and the power of God. And then there was living a many, many souls. Not the city four square at home. They don't stay all the time. They come down and enjoy that wonderful house, and, that's, and there's not a mortgage on it. If you could imagine the construction of all of heaven, not one building upon this earth can begin to touch the glories of heaven. You may ask, well, what is the top of the mansions? What is the roof like? The roof is the glory of God. The Lord, gl roof is the great mantle of God. All of those mansions are covered with His glory. All with the glory of God. And it forms like, like a wonderful roof of the, of the place. The mantle of God. And so miraculous, so special, and so real. And then we went all the way across the city of glass, across the crystal sea. I want you to try to figure in your mind thousand of, two or three hundred thousand miles of sea. The crystal sea, great sea. And when you look upon it, in the distance it looks like a million, million, million sunsets with all the different colors, the gorgeous colors of that crystal sea. We got in a, we got in a wonderful chariot in there, and we took a trip with Jesus over the crystal sea into eternity. As we traveled away back in there, the glorious colors of eternity, we traveled over the great, the, not the sea of glass, that's good, but the crystal sea. We got out there in that place in the miraculous sights. Nothing upon this earth will touch the sights of the crystal sea. There you can look up and see the base of the throne of the God. On the other side, looking like literally like thousands of glorious colored mountains. The sight is so spectacular. And you imagine millions traveling back in there and having a joy among that beautiful interior of heaven. It's going to take you a long time to tour all of heaven so big. You can spend 10,000 years up there and not see it all. You've got really something looking to do, Mother. You laying in the hospital there and listening to these tapes. God bless you. You're just on ready to leave this earth. But there's something waiting on the other side. There's something waiting for you on the other side, and it's heaven. Heaven to enjoy forever the glories of the world. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Let's pray. Father, we pray, O oh God, for the ones who listen to this tape. Let them get on their knees, Lord, right now, and accept you as your Savior, and call on God. O oh God, save souls. Let them just, just listen to this voice, saying, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. I want to be in heaven with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you is my prayer. More of heaven on the next tape. God bless you. I love you. I love you very much. May God bless you is my prayer in Jesus' name.